Hello, James George, back again with episode six of Hobbyist to Pro. And today we've got a lot to cover. I'm gonna start with the floating finger ring routine uh, because I've had requests for that from some of uh, our audience members out there. And the video I have was uh, filmed such a long time ago. So we're gonna go ahead and update that right here. This is an excellent routine to be adding to your close-up walk-around repertoire. And as long as you're using the right reel with the right thread on it, you're not gonna get caught uh, as long as you're aware of the lighting conditions too. And that's the number one thing. If you're working with any IT, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna be in the right environment for it. And I know that there's a lot of new products that have come out in the IT, but they sadly don't have the right thread on them or they're not engineered to have uh, the right thread on them. For the close-up environment, I definitely would recommend getting our Spectra thread reel it's, a, it's the Boss version like this, and it has the finest invisible thread uh, that's available, and it's extraordinarily invisible and will work well for many different environments, and uh, you won't have that fear of getting caught. And if you're using the wrong thread in the wrong environment, you know, you're definitely gonna have people seeing the thread and the magic just disappears, and then you, uh, you don't look as great as you would like to. Okay, so I'm gonna cover this real quick. Let's get on with where to wear this Boss ITR. Um, so you wanna kinda of check the direction that the thread's coming out of the reel, and it should be traveling so it's going over the top of the reel and then winding around the course. You wanna be aware of that, because you want the thread kinda of pulling down, and this kind of creates a path of least resistance. You want to think about the path that the thread has to travel and it being a, a clear path. You don't want a lot of things interfering with it. Now typically I'd wear this with a collared shirt and you could wear it on your right side or your left side depending on your preference or if you're right or left handed there might be some things to consider there. You can also do it just in a t-shirt as well. You can just clip it right inside, just what I'm doing, I just kind of push my thumb against the, the alligator clip and that kind of captures some of the fabric into the claws of the alligator clip and that allows me just to clip it in my shirt. You'll want to check it in the mirror, make sure it looks normal. And then you can just take the thread and I run it down to my belt. And I'll use, typically I'll just put it right on the bottom of my belt buckle, or if you're wearing suspenders, you can clip, clip it to that, or even one of the rivets on your jeans, if you're wearing blue jeans, works great too. And what's nice about that is you can't really see anything unusual. That's why I clip it to the bottom of my belt buckle, because people can't see that there's something weird on my belt buckle, like a piece of wax. So yeah, that's the other thing too. Make sure you're using the hard ITR wax and uh, yeah, request that from your favorite magic dealer because you want the hard wax, not too soft because otherwise, especially if it's warm outside, um, it's gonna be too soft, the thread will pull out of the wax and then you're not able to do the routine, which isn't a lot of fun either. Um, so yeah, check that. And especially if you're in a warm climate like I, I am where I live or in California or places like that or Arizona, um, you're definitely going to want to use a lot harder wax and if it's too hot you can also use blue tack It comes in different colors. Sometimes you can get it in gray and that might be better for your application But yeah, you can use that material as a substitute if the climate's too hot um, So let's get on with this. So our setup is here You've got it in, pinned in your clothes and the thread is kind of running down at an angle and what you want to be able to do is kind of rub your finger on your shirt. And what I tell the audience to cover this move is that I'm developing a static charge. And I typically will say something about, you know, the weather conditions are just right today. And I might be able to share this with you guys. Um, and it doesn't really matter what the weather conditions are, you just say that. And then you go, yeah, with, you know, then what I can do, I can slip my finger under the line, so you just kind of go in this area that will, you know, because the thread is, there's a space here that I can get my finger in. 
And you want to kind of run your finger up to the top to where the reel almost is located right here. And then I bring my finger down in an arc. So this smoothly pulls the thread out of the reel. So I'll just kind of sit up here so you can see. Now what I do, so the thread is running over the top of my finger down to my belt loop like this. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling the ring off of my finger and kind of threading it on to the ring. And this will allow me, yeah, and then I just tell them, you know, I can balance this ring right on the end of my finger if I do it carefully. And then if I really concentrate, I can kind of get the static to go inside the ring and watch what happens, you know, and then I let this finger go. You don't want it wobbling. That doesn't look good. So you want to practice to where you can get this smooth and where, you know, where it's staying stationary. Any sort of wobble to me will communicate to the spectators that it's a string. Well, I'm talking and it's transferring that into the thread line. So you probably want to be remaining silent while you do that aspect of it. Otherwise, your voice is actually going to be translated into a vibration that's going to be transmitted into the ring and be visible which is interesting, I've never really thought about that, but yeah, that's the case. And what you can do, you can have the spectator go ahead and place their hand under the ring. And as they come forward with their hand, you can lower this one and have the ring touch their palm. And as soon as it touches their palm, you let the end slide off of this finger and watch, and that leaves it completely clean. There's no string attached or nothing. So this is a brilliant routine for close-up walk around. I've been performing it in my shows for over 30 years uh, successfully with the ITR. And it's a great routine. What's nice about it, you're always set up. Once you master it, you're never breaking the thread. And so it's set up to go. And one thing I'll say is be sure to remove the reel from your clothes as soon as you get home and put it back in your magic uh, case or whatnot so that you're not running it through the wash machine. You know, the washing machine has probably been my best friend for the last 30 years with so many uh, people having, uh, having to buy a new ITR, which doesn't hurt me, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for you guys here. So yeah, let's take that into consideration. Now the other request I had was the Z-Grip. So I'm gonna cover that and I'll also cover that with another ITR hookup that's really kind of cool. And in this case, you stick the wax to the back of a deck of cards, and this goes in your front shirt pocket. So you're wanting to wear a, 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 a shirt that's got a pocket right here. And then when you go to do the routine, you can set the card deck on the table. And then you, now you automatically have the thread running down to the table. And so the line is running this way. So you would borrow some currency from a spectator and you'll just take it and you would fold this down and then this is kind of from Michael Amar taught me this actually and you can kind of put a twist in this which kind of makes an S configuration and what's nice about this is that it'll slide along the invisible thread wherever you put it but as soon as you let go it will stay exactly where you want it without sliding. Okay, so as far as the Z grip goes, I'm gonna move back just a little bit so you can kind of see how this works. You want your palm facing out with your thumb down as you come into the line. The line's gonna go between these two fingers and then you're gonna pinch it and then you're gonna rotate your hand 180 degrees which is a half turn. And then what I can do, again, I can pull more thread by coming up. So the bill's not really moving, but I'm pulling a lot more thread out of the ITR. This allows me to let the bill go down to where I want. And then if I let it go, it can come back up. So let's, what I'll do is I'll move the table back so you can get some more distance. And you can really see that in action. So yeah, we've got the bill here. So, so basically the routine is after you get at this, you can kind of crumple it into a ball. I'll typically rub my fingers in my hair and that creates like a static charge. And it kind of appears as, the, you know, as though the bill's just clinging to your 
fingers from a static charge, which is great. And that kind of misdirects them off of the thread. They start thinking about static electricity and magnetics and other things, anything other than what the truth is that you're using, you know, IT in this case. So yeah, and that's, this allows you to pass your hands around this way. You can kind of do this move, this move, this move, and you can do even this move or kind of a hoop pass. And that's the other thing I'd like to cover too is the hoop pass, it's really cool. But you're not typically doing that close up. I'll, I'll be covering that in a future episode um, when we go over some more ITR stuff because I, I have a lot to talk about. I just got back from a magic convention up in uh, Nagaland, that's between Bhutan and Myanmar and near China. And a uh, very cool place, awesome, extremely beautiful and met many wonderful magicians and saw a lot of magic I'd never seen before in my life, which was very cool. And met a lot of great magicians. I definitely recommend going to a magic convention if you can get a chance. And uh, so let's go ahead and cover this. But anyway, yeah, that's really cool. I wanted to talk, tell you guys about that. Um, so you're going here, you're doing the Z-grip. The bill floats down. You can make it float all the way down to the floor if you want. I know it's gonna kinda go out of the camera range here. But if I just loosen the grip or let go of my top finger, it's still putting a little bit of resistance on the line. So I can kind of make it slowly float back up to my fingers. And you want to practice that until you get it really smooth. So yeah, just avoid the bill dangling and wobbling. You know, get it to where it's really looking like it's just stationary in the air. You can reach out and catch it. So practice that using our practice method that we covered earlier where you, where you do it 12 times in a row perfectly, no errors, and then you can bump that up to 24 and do it again, and even up to 50 if you really want to get hardcore about your magic being perfect. So again, you know, that's the ITR, some super magic. It's really not that hard to do. You just have to have the guts to get out there and do it. And once you do and you realize, wow, this isn't really as hard as I thought. And, uh, you know, with these kinds of hookups, you're never breaking the thread. So that's not really being an issue after you master the routines. A lot of people, you know, write about, I noticed on YouTube reviews on ITRs, breaking the thread. But that's something that only is in the beginning. It's like learning to play the guitar and learning to tune it. You're going to work through that and you're going to get to the point with your routine where you're never breaking the thread and that is if you're managing your hookups properly and you're aware and conscious of what you're doing during the routine and you've implemented the practice system to where you have it down maybe start with the kevlar thread practice with that or even the vector thread work with that until you're very confident and comfortable then you can kind of move down to the finer grades of it as you get more comfortable, that way you're able to practice with a thread that's not going to break real easy, uh, like the Vectra. So you can start there, although I don't recommend Vectra thread for close-up magic. It's just not, it's not as invisible as the Spectra thread by any sense, and you're going to get caught with it. So I can't recommend that, even though it is super strong. As someone who's out there actually working and doing shows, you will be, have people seeing it and pointing it out, and it's not a lot of fun. Well, I, you know, I thought it was really great in the beginning, but then I actually went out there and tried it. So that's what you're going to find with a lot of stuff that's out there being promoted, that it's not real world material. It's just got a slick trailer, a nice demo, and uh, it's not honest, you know. Yeah, that's what I hope to do is bust through a lot of that crap and bring you guys the stuff that's really valuable, that you can really use, and it is a worker, and you can put it in your show and your audience is going to love it you're going to love it because they love it everybody's having a great time and it you know and it's not a lot of fun when you have people shouting out oh it's a thread i can see it blah 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 you know so yeah you want to avoid that and uh i mean i would start with our eye boss woolly nylon fine real if you're on a budget and you don't have the extra money to spend on a spectra thread uh, spectra reel then what I would do is save up your money until you can get a spectra reel and uh, Definitely trade it out for that in the long run If you're out there working and doing a lot of close-up magic, it's definitely the solution to the IT problem and uh, Even the new uh, I think it's called the venom or something that's out there 
I can't recommend it. It doesn't have the right thread. It's not, you know, it's and not only that, but it's, you know, it's 10 times more price than what we charge for uh, an iBoss reel, which solves the problem completely. I don't understand why you would need that. Yeah, I just don't get it. But that's fine. You know, people are free to do what they want to do. Um, anyway, let's move along. So yeah, we covered the music, we covered the lighting conditions, and uh, yeah, definitely on the music, you know, that's, I think the thing to really think about on that is what moves you, you know, what gives you goosebumps. And it's a very subjective thing, you know, if you're, I could recommend a piece of music to you, but if you don't like it and it doesn't inspire you, um, and you're not feeling it, then your audience isn't going to feel it. So in terms of selecting music, be very conscious of that. You know, it's really about you. It's what moves you, what, you know, energizes you, gets you pumped up. And then you're communicating that to the audience. They're going to sense that and feel that your excitement over that. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's going to come from you getting out there and doing the work. Nobody can really do that for you. I can't find the music that's right for you. Everybody has to find their own music. And that's really what this journey is all about, you know, and realizing you're the music creator, you know, we're the dream makers, we're the mystery creators, and we're the last resource of mystery and wonder on this planet as science and technology explains everything and removes all the mystery from our lives, you know. And I tell people that in my show, and I recommend you do the same thing, you know. You know, you can sit there and blurt out the secret and spoil the mystery and wonder for everybody, but what have you really accomplished any more than science and technology is already doing, you know? Congratulations. I don't think that's such a great thing. And you educate people on why they shouldn't shout out the secrets, and uh, even if they do spot some flaw, you know, and it helps build up your confidence, you know. Not that you want to be apologizing for that. You should have your routines dialed in and practiced to the point where they're flawless. But, you know, sometimes people will say that even when they don't know the, the right answer. They'll blurt out something as if they do know. And that's the problem, you know, thinking you know something when you don't really know it is, is, is a terrible thing, you know. It, it shuts your mind off from expanding to what might be the real answer. And if we settle for garbage and we settle for thinking we know things when we don't really know them, we're not open to new possibilities. We're not open to maybe the real truth or the real understanding. And that's on our journey with anything anywhere in our life, you know, and especially with your journey with magic. And I think this magic is a really powerful tool. You know, I especially think it's awesome for kids with autism or people who struggle with social skills. I think it's one of the most powerful hobbies that if you're an adult with kids, I really think it, you can't beat it. I mean, you got public speaking, critical thinking, mechanical engineering, and uh, reading, and just, you know, math. A lot of tricks revolve around math, chemistry, science, technology. Now there's a lot of apps coming out that you can do with your cell phone. I just got a new one, it's pretty cool. I'll show you guys that in the next episode. And again, you know, don't be afraid to get out there and shoot me over a video of what you guys are doing. Give me more thoughts, more questions. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, making another video for you guys soon. And I hope to get another one out by tomorrow. And I know I kind of had a, a pause here, but I went and did a convention and then I had a big pile of shows come up. So I'm back to it now. And, you know, I really can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. All right, thanks. This is James George signing off.